inside the field now and uh, I wanted to talk about some of the key considerations when we talk about constructability. Constructability in my mind is how easy is it to install. The easier it is to install, the faster it's going to go in with the quality that you need at the end of the day. So constructability is driven by a couple key components. One of those is the tolerance in the rack. And in this case, what we've got is tolerance baked into every component that goes towards assembling the rack. We've got tolerance in the boot itself. In this case, we've got a front and a back post design, a dual post design. We've got slotting in the boot itself. Uh, whether your slotting is east, west, or north, south, it's, uh, it's really gonna be a byproduct of some of the site realities in terms of the construction methodology that's gonna be employed. We've also got sort of the, the, the up-down uh, on both the front and the back legs. The boots are, are universal in terms of front post or back post. Uh, you've got pre-drilled uh, holes on all of the components that allow you a level of flexibility in terms of how you need to align the rack and space the rack, uh, which is uh, obviously a key consideration for the installers of the system. Uh, we've also got one great little feature here from a constructability standpoint are the L brackets both in the bottom and at the top of, uh, of this, this uh, main beam uh, in the A-frame section here where the way that this works is once you've installed that bracket you can hang the rails on top of that bracket which makes your life a lot easier in terms of installing uh, the uh, the final hardware from the bracket to the beam itself so that just it's a it's a small thing that the designers considered and I'll tell you it makes a big difference in the field for the guys that got to put this together and need to put together uh, quickly with again the quality that's required for these types of projects so uh, a few words I want to say about uh, about the, the glass install on the PRU rack way that these mid clamps work it's it it actually is really simple for the guys in the field or gals in the field uh, to increase your production rate you're not you're not you're not fighting with these clamps to try and get them aligned you drop the clamp in sit it on the one panel next panel slides in tighten it up you've got these tabs that ensure that everything is where it needs to be and your bond clips are where they need to be. They can't twist, they can't turn. So from a QA standpoint, from a quality control standpoint, you end up again with increased productivity and simplicity on the install, which all drives down cost on these projects. The other thing that I'll point out is just in terms of lateral support for the rack. Um, in some cases you've got long cross members in certain racking systems. Uh, which quite honestly with a dual post system uh, when you're trying to get in maintenance lawn care etc you're going to be fighting with those cross members or your maintenance crew is going to be fighting with those cross members with the PRU rack the lateral support is taken up by a few 45 short cross members that do a fantastic job of, of, uh, of driving lateral support into the racking system itself so this is uh, this is, you'll see the third A-frame in, there's uh, five A-frames per table. This was an 11 by four layout uh, orientation here. 11 panels per string, you got four strings per table. Um, but this is what I want to highlight is this little setup right here uh, that puts a lot of lateral support into this rack. Obviously with the dual post system, you end up with uh, a very strong rack. You have no bending moment at the posts. Uh, based on the structural makeup of the rack itself, which then, uh, I mentioned I wouldn't get too much into the foundation, but suffice to say, when you've got no moment force, no bending force at the top of the pile, your connection can be a single bolt into the pile, because all you're really having to resist is a tensile force uh, from the wind wanting to pick the rack up and pull on that pile and pull it out of the ground. So as long as your foundation engineer knows what he's doing, with respect to frost heat, depending on the conditions you're in and soil conditions, you've got a really sturdy product here. Something that's gonna last well beyond that 20 year design or 25 year design life that most engineers are targeting or most owners are targeting for these types of utility scale products or projects. Right? So 
Another comment I want to make with respect to the PRU rack and the tolerances uh, is the net impact of the tolerances. Not only do those tolerances allow installers or make installers life a lot easier in the field and it increases productivity in terms of the install rates with your, your tables or your, or your racking system along with your glass in terms of how you can square up the tables uh, and move on to the next one. Um, it, it also drives your overall civil costs and the grading requirements uh, and that ties uh, largely into your foundation design as well and how your foundation and your rack marry up and the available tolerances from a grade standpoint. The, the higher the tolerances uh, that are available in the rack, the less grading that you're going to need to undertake on the site. Uh, it's, it's obviously a consideration for your, your designers, your engineers, when they're laying out your site and, uh, and they're working through their stormwater management strategies, whatever may be required by county, municipality, or local authorities otherwise. Um, but it is absolutely um, uh, a critical aspect in your decision making on any of these types of utility scale projects is how much grading am I going to have to do? Because it drives your schedule, it drives your overall cost, uh, depending on the area that you're in, grading uh, is, uh, if you got to do a lot of it, uh, there's only certain times of the year, sort of in the northeast, uh, where that's easy to do. You get it in the spring, in the fall, uh, and you're in the mud and in the wet, uh, it's a lot more of a challenge. So uh, the less grading you have to do, uh, the faster your site's going to get put together, the cheaper it's going to be in terms of overall project economics, and that's really a key consideration. And that all ties back to the tolerances that are in your rack and, and how your design engineers from a foundation standpoint uh, uh, work with that tolerance and come up with an intelligent design uh, that makes the life of the installers a lot easier.